In this video tutorial, what I'd like to demonstrate to you is how to read a visual terminal chart, otherwise known as a VTC. Now the VTC is a chart that's perfect for RPAS flight planning operations. And the reason for that is the chart not only displays topographical information, but also displays a lot of airspace information such as control airspace, information around um, aerodromes as well as restricted areas. What I'll be using to demonstrate is the um, Brisbane and the Sunshine Coast VTC. Now instead of having to show you a paper-based map, what I've actually done is gone to the Air Services Australia website and downloaded this as a PDF. Now up until recently you had to actually buy a map or download the map through software such as Oz Runways. Now you've got the option of actually downloading and looking at it through the Air Services Australia website for free, which is excellent news. If you want to find the VTCs such as this, as well as other aeronautical charts, simply visit the Air Services Australia website, which is at airservicesaustralia.com, and then just go to the publications link at the top here, click on that, click on aeronautical information package. Now for some reason you've got to click it again, and here we go, you've got a bit of a copyright notice, some conditions of use and a disclaimer. I've read all this previously, so I'm just going to click I agree. Now this is the link where you not only find your various aviation charts, but you can also look up the AIP, the Aeronautical Information Publication, which is something we've referred to a few times throughout our um, flight planning as well as our air law briefings. It also allows you to look up the URSA, or the Unroot Supplement Australia, and as you may have seen in another one of our videos, that's to do with aerodrome information as well as looking up hours of operation and information about restricted areas, danger areas and prohibited areas. So this is where you'd find all that info. What we're interested in today is the AIP charts. So I'll click here and it gives me the different options. So these charts will um, usually have a, a shelf life of six months. These ones were effective the 25th of May 2017. And what I'm interested in today is the VTCs. And here are all the various VTCs um, for Australia. So these are set up around the main terminal aerodromes, the main sort of controlled aerodromes in Australia. And the one I want to see is the Brisbane VTC just here. And then that would go away and download. So I'll go to one that I prepared earlier, which is here in this PDF here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit uh, closer so we can um, read it a bit more accurately. Probably the first thing that stands out to you is all these various rings. Now, there's a lot of um, blue, or more correctly cyan rings, depicted around, um, around the place. And you also see a lot of these magenta or, or pink rings as well. So I'm going to spend a bit of time explaining what they are. Um, because they were exp explained fairly quickly throughout the previous lectures, so I just want to really reinforce how to read one of these maps. The blue lines I want to draw your attention to are the, the ones that are situated around the Brisbane airport. So if you had have, um, viewed one of our previous uh, lectures, you would have seen that um, the controlled airspace around Brisbane airport, it's almost like an upside down wedding cake. That's what these various rings are depicting. They're showing you the controlled airspace boundaries not only a horizontal distance from the aerodrome, but they're also highlight to you the vertical, um, I guess, orientation or the heights of the controlled airspace boundaries. So if I zoom in a bit, I can start to explain to you what this means, where the controlled airspace horizontal and upper and lower limits are. Within this cyan ring here, it's what they call a control zone or CTR, and it's depicted here, you can see it says Brisbane CTR. What this means, this section, this label here, is it's saying it's Class C airspace. Now that's airspace that's controlled by um, a radar-based service, and it's from surface to 3,500 feet above, above mean sea level, or AMSL. Now that's a very important point I want you to take away from, from this briefing. It's any sort of heights you see depicted on these charts all have the reference above mean sea level. It's not above ground level, it's above mean sea level. And the reason for that is they needed a constant datum. You can imagine that these um, charts, they spread over a large geographic area and very different elevations and whatnot. To make it a nice consistent height, they've put it everything in altitude, so that's height above mean sea level. Therefore, the case here, this control zone, it's managed by um, someone in the air traffic control tower 
and they look after the airspace from surface or ground level up to 3,500 feet. Where it gets a little bit confusing though is if you look down here you've actually got another label and it says C, so C stands for class C, LL, lower limit, 3,500 feet. What it's saying is that there's another parcel of class C airspace above the control zone which extends from 3,500 feet upwards. So there's two bits. You've got the lower bit, service to 3,500 feet. It's class C airspace. It's managed by a guy in a tower. And then typically you've got another parcel of class C airspace above it from 3,500 feet upwards. This will be managed by another air, different air traffic controller. Where it gets a little bit easier to read is if you have a look within this cyan wedge out to the side here, out to the east of Brisbane. And what it says is C, again, class C airspace, LL, lower limit. 1,000 feet. What that means is that from one, a lower limit of 1,000 feet upwards is controlled airspace, class C airspace. If you're below 1,000 feet, you're below the lower limit, you are no longer in controlled airspace. So therefore you're in uncontrolled airspace or otherwise referred to as class G airspace. What that would mean for a manned aviation pilot is if they wanted to operate 1,000 feet or above in this section here, they'd need a clearance or permission from an air traffic controller. If they stayed below 1,000 feet, they could navigate through this parcel of airspace without any sort of clearance from an air traffic controller. For us as RPA pilots, you're typically not going to be up above the 1,000 feet, so you just need to consider um, whether these Class C lower limits are going to apply to you. If you were operating within this control zone, you've identified, hey, I will be operating in controlled airspace. What sort of rules will apply to me? And one of the big ones was the thing that if you operate um, an RPA that's two kilos or more for commercial purposes in controlled airspace, you needed to speak to the, contro the um, control tower, you need to make broadcasts, that sort of thing. The next thing I wanted to show you on the charts is a restricted area. Now quite a good example is the Green Bank firing range to the south of Brisbane, if I zoom in. And here it is here. And the way it's marked on the chart is this magenta line, this pink line. So if you were to operate your RPA within this magenta line in this area, you'd actually be operating in a restricted area. And as we learned in air law, you can't operate in a restricted area unless you got the permission of the controlling authority. But there's also some height limitations associated with it. So let, let's look at it, let's break it down. So this restricted area, it's labeled R, it's for restricted. R633 Alpha. So Romeo 633 Alpha is the designator and its vertical limitations are from surface or ground level up to 2000 feet. Remember any heights were above mean sea level. So if you were to operate within this area here from surface to 2000 feet, you'd be operating within the restricted area. There's another part of the airspace from 2000 feet to 3500 feet. This time it's labeled Romeo 633 Bravo. So there's actually two different layers of restricted area within here. One's lower and one's higher. And I believe they've got different hours of operation, which is why they've been split up. As an RPA pilot, you will always need permission from the controlling authority to operate within a restricted area. However, there's something very similar, and that's called a danger area. You can see that it's, again, you've got your magenta writing and you've got your magenta boundaries as well. But the difference being, you can actually fly within a danger area and you don't need any sort of approval or permission or anything like that. You just need to be aware that there's some sort of risk to airspace users. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a sec, but so danger 666 or delta 666 is the danger area and it's this time serviced to 2000 feet. What you do now, if you wanted to find out what the danger area is, you go to your URSA, you look up the PRD section, and it's going to tell you what the type of activity is, the hours of operation, all that sort of thing. What this danger area here is, it's actually a training area for light aircraft that um, operate out of Archerfield Airport, which is out to the, um, to the west here. Aircraft will depart Archerfield, they'll fly out to this eastern training area, and they'll perform maneuvers, in this case from 2,000 feet down the surface, or even out here, they can go a bit higher, from 3,500 down the surface. As an RPA pole, if you saw this on a map, you just take that into consideration for your risk planning. Um, just be aware that there could be low level aircraft operating in your area.
So while we're talking about Archer Field, let's have a bit of a look at it, how it's depicted here. So it's, it's a much smaller control zone this time. It's telling us it's AF for Archer Field Control Zone CTR, but this time it's different. It's Class D airspace or Delta airspace. Class D airspace is slightly different. You don't have radar screens. Um, separation between the, the way that an air traffic control separates aircraft is using a procedural service. So it's all based on radio calls. In this case, it's serviced to 1,500 feet, and then above it, you've got Class C airspace from 1,500 feet and above. What's interesting though is you've got all these um, diamonds as well as purple dots all around Archerfield. And it's important to know what these are too. These are what's known as um, VFR entry points and lanes of entry. Now if you get confused and you don't remember what any of these are, the good thing is there's a legend on these charts and it's depicted at the top of the PDF as well. It's going to be a little bit hard to read, sorry it's not aligned really well. But if you forget what anything means, just have a quick look at the legend and it'll give you a hand to, to understand it. So what we saw was these um, white and purple diamonds, that was a VFR approach point and we had these purple dots, and that's a VFR route. I'll go back down to Archerfield. By the way, CASA don't mind if you have to look at that during your Chief Pilot approval. And when you do one of our exams, you're welcome to look at that as well when we ask you any questions about the maps. Okay, so back to the Archerfield example, an aircraft that's gone and done its flight training out to the east, they then will fly into one of these um, VFR inbound reporting points. In this case here, it's, it's one called Target, which is labelled here. And what it basically is, it's a big shopping centre, a Target shopping centre, and they've painted a red target on the roof. So for a pilot, that's quite easy to see. Um, they'll fly to that point, Target, they'll report inbound to the control tower, and then they'll follow this VFR route into the control zone. You can see there's others around as well. You've got Park Ridge Water Tower, you've got Goodner out to the west, and you've got the TV towers to the north. If I was operating an RPA near any of these, I'd probably want to um, consider that for my risk management, maybe have an additional spot or be listening on a VHF radio, because not all aircraft could be high. You might actually get some quite low aircraft due to stress of weather or something like that. VFR routes aren't always leading into a, an aerodrome and a good example is to the north here you've got what they call the UNIVAT VFR route. What the UNIVAT route allows is um, particularly helicopter traffic, um, hospital helicopter traffic allows them to transit between Brisbane Airport which was up here and Archfield Airport quickly without needing some sort of clearance because there's a little section through here where the lower limit's a thousand feet. So if they stay low, they can actually fly through there without having to get any sort of clearance from an air traffic controller, therefore they're not suffering any delay. So again, if I was operating in this area, I might want to consider how that's going to affect my operation. Other things to know how to read on, on a VTC such as this is uncontrolled aerodromes. And you've got one here listed, you can see this is where the Redcliffe Aerodrome is. You've got the Caboolture Aerodrome up here. And where an aerodrome has a particular CTAF, it'll actually be labelled as well on the map. So if you're operating in the Caboolture area here, this is the CTAF frequency you'd use for your VHF communications. If we look down around the Redcliffe area though, now we've got what uh, looks like a green type of marking around it. And if you've done our aeronautical ra uh, radio briefing yet, you would have come across what's called a broadcast area. That's what's being labelled here. And you can see up here it says for operations in this area, service to the um, bottom of control airspace, use CTAF frequency 127.15. So it's saying any aircraft operations in this area need to use a specific frequency. That's a broadcast area. And the last thing I want to show you is if you are operating away from an aerodrome, but there's still some sort of requirement to make a broadcast on a VHF radio, and that could be tied to area approval for beyond visual line of sight or operations above 400 feet or something like that. The way you look for the, um, the correct frequency is by looking for these markings here. So this is um, Brisbane Centre, so it's a VHF frequency for all a widespread area not associated with a particular aerodrome. 
I'll show you what area it is associated with. Anywhere within this green marking, and it would go down a lot further, you'd need to use Brisbane Centre 125 decimal 7. If you're operating an aerodrome that doesn't have a specific marking, like a bull or it's not labelled like Hazleton, let's say you're operating an aerodrome out here that's not depicted on the map, you'd need to use this frequency. Let's have a look up around the Kilcoy area. You can see a slightly different Brisbane Centre frequency, 129.0, and that's for all this area within this green, green marking here. And the last thing to start getting comfortable with with VTCs is the different topographical markings. So lakes, yeah, it makes common sense. They're these blue areas down here. But then you get the different shadings and they're showing you um, topographical information about um, elevation, so hills and mountains and things. You'll get spot heights. So in this case here, it's telling you Neuron Mountain is 1,670 feet. That little black bit, that peak there, it's 1,670 feet above sea level. If you get quite a, a sharp or abrupt change in shading like you do around Mount Biwa, it shows you that it's obviously a much steeper hill. If you want to know what the various shadings are for their height above sea level, you can look to the side of the chart and you've got your hypsometric tints and they tell you. So anything like this light green colour would be 500 to 1000 feet above sea level. A couple of final things I'll show you on these charts. Any sort of built up areas are, are labelled or marked, I guess, using this yellow shading. Now these charts, they're primarily aimed at visual um, flight rules pilots. So VFR pilots, they navigate by looking down at the ground, figuring out where they are, and then using these ground reference points to travel to the next destination. That's why any sort of built up areas are, are quite prominently shaded in yellow as well as other markings like golf courses and so on. However, information that could be quite useful for you is other types of airspace. So um, again, use the legend where you need to, but the H is telling you that there's sports aircraft in the form of hang gliders operating here. U stands for ultralights, and you can also get other information too, like model aircraft flying areas, parachute dropping areas. Again, all very important information because that's going to form part of your risk assessment to be aware of what factors may affect your operation. If you're out operating around here to the west of Nambour, around the Montville, Mullaney, Mapleton area, you just need to be aware that, yeah, you've got these H symbols. So you go and look that up, again, using the legend at the top here. And at H, it's telling you that it's a hang glider. Be very careful if you were operating there to make sure that you do avoid the hang gliding areas. So that's the VTC in a nutshell. If there's um, any additional information you'd like about the, the visual terminal charts, um, please just, just let us know by sending us through an email and um, we'll answer your questions and help you where we can.